Welcome in this next video about iOS reverse engineering. If you're watching this from YouTube, please make sure to also subscribe to the course Mobile Hacking Lab and also follow the previous steps. In the previous step, we did a decompilation of an app. So we pulled the app, the IBA file from an iOS device and we also dumped the source code, the Objective-C and Swift classes. So if you didn't do this yet, please also follow the previous video and workbook. And in this video, we will continue with analyzing those files and we are also going to use some different tooling which you can use to directly load the binary of an app, so the Mac OS binary. And this tool is called Ghidra, I want to show you in a few minutes. So Ghidra is a tool developed by the NSA and is an open source tool to do static analysis. And one more thing to notice, next to the static analysis, you might also want to start with dynamic analysis. So in the pen testing basics, we already learned you how to use Frida and Frida Trace. So maybe you want to really use the app on the device, then also run Frida Trace and then note down some interesting functions. And those interesting functions, for example, you can then analyze further if you do a static analysis of the source code. And you can also attach a debugger like GDB or LLDB is specifically used for iOS. But for now, let's continue with the Objective-C and Swift dumps we created before. So if you followed along with the workbooks, we have the workbook decompiling the app 4.2. And then you can just copy paste this script from the last step. So we can copy this complete code. And this script will all dump all Objective-C and Swift classes. For the Objective-C classes, it will create a file for every class. And for Swift, it will put everything in one file. So you can just copy the contents of this script, save it as a best file, and then you can run it. So in my case, I collected this damn vulnerable iOS application IPA file, and I have this dump.sh script. So I can run dump.sh and then the name of the IPA file. And then within a few seconds, it created a lot of output and files. So it extracted the application to this directory and it also created a class dump and a swift dump directory so you could just open this directory in your favorite ide for example so then we have this class dump directory with a lot of files if you go to the next workbook you also have some guidelines about how to review those header files so those object c header files usually start with some imports so for example the foundation of the ios sdk is imported Maybe some other files are imported. Then we have a class definition, interface definition, etc. So if you want to uh, go to all the details, you can also follow this workbook to give you some uh, guidelines. So if you want to do a manual analysis, then you can, for example, search for specific strings specific to Objective-C. So for example, this NS string, NS data, etc. So in this case, you can do find in files and then, for example, search for this NS string and then you might find some interesting information. In this case, there's not that many interesting information. So you might also want to search for some custom things like, for example, jailbreak. Then you get all the classes related to jailbreak. You can, for example, see this view controller also has some methods related to jailbreak detection or jailbroken, for example, shows this interface jailbreak detection with some method is jailbroken, which is a Boolean and also and for the Swift code, it just dumped all the methods and details in one file. So that might also be easy if you just want to search specific in the Swift code. You can just search in this file. So in short, you can follow this workbook to get some more details about the Swift and the Objective-C code and how to search for things. And then I want to continue with using Ghidra, which is a disassembler. And if you're not familiar with Ghidra yet, you can just Google for it or go to the official website and then you can download it from GitHub. So it is from the NSA, they open sourced it some while ago. And to run Ghidra, you need Java, so the Java development kit. That's basically the only requirement. So you can extract the file from the releases and then there is an executable to run Ghidra. So in my case, I'm already created a shortcut to this executable on my desktop. And then within Ghidra, you need to create a new project. So I just created a project called test, and then you can import a binary. And in Ghidra, I will pick patch import. You can import the whole IPA file, but to make it a little bit more specific and faster, I only want to import the binary of the application. So this is the binary of the application. So I only want to import this binary 
which is recognized as a MacOS binary with an ARC64 architecture. And the reason why I did batch import, because sometimes you get different architectures in one binary, and then you can, for example, only select one of those architectures to speed the process up or to do some specific analysis. So there is one file imported, then you can double click. And then I would recommend to add one additional option, which is a decompiler parameter ID, which is recommended for iOS. It says that it can be slow for large applications, but it should be no problem. And then it will start analyzing. I will not explain you all the details of Ghidra, because in the Android course, we all in our other trainings, we also explain a lot. But important to know is this symbol tree, so you can also filter. So you can find functions, classes, exports, etc. So exports are, for example, exported functions, which are also interesting. And you might already recognize some of those names. But what we can do, we can do a simple search, for example, for jailbreak. And then we can see a lot of functions or classes related to jailbreak detection. If we scroll a little bit, we, for example, can also find this jailbreak detection is jailbroken. And if we dig a little bit deeper into this is jailbroken function, then it returns a byte, which is saved as local variable 11 or created. And it has a lot of if statements. And in the end, the local variable will return a value of 1 or it will return a value of 0. So we could assume that the value 0 is is jailbroken no and the value 1 is if jailbroken yes. So to bypass jailbreak detection, we might want to change this function to always return 0. In the next video, I will show you how you can modify this function. But for now, this is just in short how you can use some tools for static analysis. So hope to see you in the next video.